If you've recently driven through Mount Evelyn, uh, you may have noticed some interesting uh, features and rainwater gardens that have been uh, popping up all over the place over the last six months. And they're all part of the Little Stringy Bark Creek project, which is a world first right here in our own backyard. And to find out more, we're gonna have a chat to Council's Stephanie Hamill and also Melbourne Uni's Darren Boss. Darren, what's the Little Stringy Bark Creek project all about? Well, it's well established that the urbanisation of catchment leads to a severe degradation of local waterways. Mm -hmm. So when you take a natural forested catchment and you build houses and roads and you connect those houses and roads directly to the creek uh, with stormwater pipes, which is the traditional approach to managing stormwater, you see a dramatic change in the hydrology of that catchment, mm. the way that the water enters the creek and the way that the water interacts with the creek. And the result of that is that we have increased erosion in the creek, we have a loss of habitat, a loss of biodiversity, and then the ecosystem services of that creek are lost as well. Yeah, right. And um, with this particular World First project, Stephanie, can I ask, who is actually involved? There's uh, many stakeholders uh, involved, um, so starting with Melbourne Water, mm -hmm. who is uh, responsible for the waterways, um, but also uh, very much so council has been um, participating, also being in charge of the drainage um, and all the, the water runoff from the roads. Yeah. Um, and I'll go into the details of within council, again, many teams are involved to, um, to come up with this, um, this rain garden design, construction and, and then maintenance. And there's also, um, of course, so Melbourne Uni behind behind all that. Yes. Um, funding, uh, again, coming from Melbourne Water and a big part also from the state and uh, federal government. Um, within the Year Ranges Council, as I said, so many teams uh, have uh, been contributing from a design review perspective, um, but also construction supervision, and now um, much more proactive in terms of the maintenance um, of yes. these rain gardens. Big consultation with the community around in Mount Evelyn, so um, they have been involved from the uh, inception of the project where uh, people were asked interested in participating to uh, implementing on their, on their land. Um, some infrastructure such as tank and then rain garden to yes. offset all the um, uh, impervious uh, surfaces coming from the roofs, for example. And also when designing the sort of uh, system that we have behind, um, some community consultation have been put in, organized by, mm -hmm. by council and I think uh, Darren well, came, yeah. came along. Um, just uh, with an opportunity to, to get some feedback for the location, the type of plants that we um, that we can implement in the systems. Fantastic, because yeah, I've noticed that they're, they're not just on road reserve or on council land, because they, they are on, on private properties as well, which is fantastic to get that engagement and involvement with the community. That project had that um, big in, uh, innovation or initiative uh, at, the, at the beginning in particular of the, of the project. What council is looking at and maintaining many other ones on on council yes. land, really, uh, on the side of the road, but there, there was a first part of the project uh, on people's land, yeah. Yeah, fantastic. And here we are um, in Mount Evelyn on the corner of uh, Spring Street and Forge Road, and there's actually, within very close proximity, there's three different types of rainwater gardens as well, and uh, we'll show them in greater detail shortly. But I'll come back to you, Darren. Um, just in closing, what are the major objectives of this particular project? What are you hoping to achieve? Yeah, so we realise now that if we want to work and protect streams in urban catchments, we need to address these changes in hydrology that result yes. from the urbanisation of the catchment. So what we're trying to do is um, retain as much water in the catchment as we can, mm -hmm. but also provide some water to the creek, but make sure that it's treated and that it's clean and it gets there in a sort of slow and controlled manner. Yes. And so oh, since 2008, we've installed over 320 stormwater control measures in the Fantastic. catchment. Yeah. Um, most of those on, on private land, as Stephanie said, about 200 40 of those, yep. uh, the rest on uh, public land like we're seeing here right now. Yes, uh, and so they treat about 50% of the um, the hard surfaces that are draining to the creek at the moment. So. Yeah, because because that's the biggest issue with urbanisation, um, with all the made roads, paved areas, um, the water's not um, soaking back into the ground naturally and then that natural filtration process hasn't been taking place. So one of the objectives is to... Yeah, that's right. The objective is to retain that water treat it and make sure that most of it doesn't go in the in the creek straight away but yep. some of it does nice yeah. and slowly fantastic yep. fantastic look uh, Darren thank you so much for your comments Stephanie as well thank you very much for giving us a little bit more of an insight into this this world first project that's happening right here in our very own backyards here in Mount Evelyn in the the little stringy bark creek rejuvenation project thank you very much guys pleasure
Thank you. Cheers.